Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, giant pandas face a complicated problem, ichthyosaurs might have scavenged, and beavers. Starting off the news this week, it's good news for emperor penguins, as satellite imagery has found evidence of a previously unknown emperor penguin colony, which raises the global population of known emperor penguins by 5-10%. to Emperor penguins are continuously under threat from melting ice around their habitat, decreasing the room colonies have to live on. It seems that the emperor penguin colonies like to keep at least 100km distance from each other, so each colony has even less ice to live on. Despite this certainly uplifting and encouraging news about the emperor penguin population, it's thought that they are still very much under threat from their shrinking habitat, and that it's likely that their population will start to dramatically fall during the century. In other news, a study published in the journal Nature and Ecology Evolution has looked at the impact of giant panda conservation on the other animal species around their habitats. Giant pandas are somewhat of a focus for conservation groups, and they certainly are under a serious threat of becoming extinct, but thankfully great progress has been made to save them. However, the large swathes of land that has been designated protected areas for the giant panda have had impacts on large carnivores that also use this land as a habitat. The study looks at the leopard, snow leopard, wolf and dole populations in these areas, and it found some worrying statistics about just how much these animals have disappeared from these areas. This is not only bad news for the animals that have disappeared, but also could have a serious knock-on effect on the ecosystem as a whole. Without their natural predators, the prey of these animals, like deer and other livestock, would see a population boom, which could seriously damage the habitats that they live in, and could really badly affect those animals that live there. Rather unfortunately, this could seriously affect the giant panda, which would undo all the effort that has been made to save these creatures in the first place. Up next is a fascinating paper published in Nature, in which the stable carbon and nitrogen isotopes of subfossil plant and beaver remains from the early Pliocene were measured, so the diet of the beaver genus, Dipoides, could be reconstructed. The research found that this beaver did indeed eat woody plants, supporting the hypothesis that they were woodcutting as a feeding behaviour. This therefore means that looking at the phylogeny of the lineage, woodcutting and wood feeding can be traced back to a beaver that must have lived some time in the Miocene, implying that these animals have been feeding on wood for over 20 million years, and also that this behaviour facilitated the later evolution of dam building, which may have arisen as a response to cooling during the Neogene. And now over to Ben with some more science. Thanks, Doc. Also in the news this week is a fascinating paper that has described a couple of ichthyosaur specimens originating from mid to upper Jurassic rocks in northern Italy. This paper found that one of the specimens could be referred to Ophthalmosauridae, and shows signs that the carcass was exposed on the seafloor for a while before being buried. Two teeth from the hexanchiform shark Notidanodon were found near the ribcage and appear to be an indication of scavenging in addition to an ichthyosaur tooth likely from a different individual that was stuck to one of the ribs, making this the first ever recorded example of an ichthyosaur scavenging on another ichthyosaur. The second ichthyosaur specimen described is much less complete and could not be confidently assigned to any group. However, it turns out that the shark teeth associated with the first specimen are also the oldest known example of the Notidanodon genus, so it's a pretty remarkable fossil all in all. And finally is a paper that has described some large theropod teeth from the late Jurassic of Uruguay, discovering that they actually belong to the genus Ceratosaurus. But that's not all. The paper also discusses the possibility that the late Jurassic Spinosaur Ostafricosaurus, known only from tooth specimens, should actually be assigned to Ceratosauridae, and explores the similarities between Ceratosaurid and Spinosaurid tooth anatomy. So a very intriguing paper indeed. And now over to Doug with the weather. Thank you, Ben. Wait. And that's it for hey. seven days of science this hey. week. I do hope Cut you him off. It, and as always, Cut him off. See you on... Oh.
Right, that's it for seven days of science this week. I do hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.